Well, uh, we uh, talk to them uh, on technical issues and the possibility of future cooperation. So we, we sign paper uh, about uh, intent to continue uh, talk, continue technical development and continue study. Outer space can be mesmerizing. Most of us would do anything to see the stars, planets, constellations and galaxies at least once in our lifetime. But there was one man who got to see all these things for over 300 days, to the point that it no longer meant anything to him. The stranded astronaut would have given anything to return to Earth and nearly lost his life while on his mission. Who was this astronaut? What exactly did he do in outer space? Also, what made him spend so long in space? And what was his fate after returning to Earth? Join us in this video as we explore what happened to the astronaut who was lost in space for 311 lonely days. Exploring outer space can be quite thrilling. Seeing the vast endless world of stars, planets, constellations and galaxies would certainly blow anyone away. Most people, at an early age, of us dreamt of becoming astronauts so they could at least experience what it is like to see outer space up close and personal. Sergio Krikalev was one of such people, and he in fact achieved his childhood dream of becoming an astronaut. However, his story isn't what you'd expect. Ordinarily, you'd think that spending time in space would be a pleasurable experience. But when you get to stay there for over 300 days like this man did, it's no longer pleasurable. In fact, at that point, it becomes a deadly cosmic nightmare. So what, really, is the story behind Sergei Krikalev, the man who spent over 300 days in space? And what happened to him while on this mind-blowing cosmic voyage? It all started back in the late 1950s and 1960s. Back then, the Cold War had ended, but the intense rivalry between the Soviet Union and the United States was far from over. The two Cold War rivals had sparked a different kind of war a war for space supremacy. The two nations had taken their battles to the skies. Each one was trying to outdo the other in aviation and space exploration technology. Experts called it the space race. Whichever side could perform the most feats would be perceived as the more powerful nation with superior technology and security. The most significant part of this race was the moon race. Both nations battled for the trophy of landing on the moon. After Russia launched the first satellite and the first man ever into space, the U.S., under the leadership of John F. Kennedy, designed the goal to land the first man on the moon. Thus, the Apollo missions were born. The Soviets responded with lunar missions of their own, though these weren't as successful as the Apollo missions. However, the USSR did make its own feats when it achieved the first spacecraft landings on Venus and Mars. The Russians also achieved the first space station called Salyut, it consisted of two crewed military reconnaissance space stations and four crewed scientific research space stations. Indeed, the race was intense between the two nations, with neither side willing to back down. Our man, Sergei Krikalev, was born at the onset of this space race. Krikalev was born on August 27, 1958, in Leningrad, now called St. Petersburg, Russia. Even as a young boy, Krikalev was much aware of the ongoing space war between the U.S. and the Soviets but perhaps he never knew or imagined he would be a key player in this race. In 1981, Krikalev graduated from the Leningrad Mechanical Institute, earning a degree in mechanical engineering. He then joined the Russian organization that dealt with manned space exploration activities. At first, his job role was all about testing spaceflight equipment and performing other minor duties as part of the ground control team during space exploration missions. However, Krikalev's highlight in his career came in 1985, when a certain rescue mission was conducted for the Russian space station, Salyut 7. Krikalev played a very important role in developing the procedures that helped astronauts dock successfully on the space station. He also helped repair the station's onboard system. It was this event that made the USSR consider Krikalev as a prime candidate for cosmonaut training. That same year, Krikalev was chosen to be a cosmonaut, just so you know, cosmonauts and astronauts are pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that the Russian Space Agency gives this title to its sailors. The name sounds cool, and it literally translates into Universal Sailor. However, achieving this title is no small feat. Krikalev had to learn things like astronomy, 
orbital mechanisms, scientific experimentation methods, and so on. By 1986, Sergei Krikalev had become a full-fledged cosmonaut. In early 1988, Krikalev began another series of intense training for a space voyage aboard the MIR space station. The MIR space station was a low-orbit space station launched by the Soviets in 1986. The station at the time was the largest artificial satellite in orbit. In fact, it took 10 years, from 1986 to 1996, to assemble this station to its full capacity. It had more mass than any spacecraft before it and served as a space research laboratory. From this station, cosmonauts could conduct experiments in biology, astronomy, and meteorology and also study spacecraft systems. MIRS was officially launched on February 28, 1986. The first sets of research mostly involved trying to understand how the human body reacts to space travel. By November 1988, Krikalev had completed his training, and so he was sent off to the station aboard the space vessel Soyuz TM-7. For this mission, alongside Krikalev were the cosmonauts Alexander Volkov and Valery Polyakov. The mission ended in April the following year. By the end of 1990, Krikalev began to prepare for another space mission, the Soyuz TM-12. This one was estimated to be a bit longer than the first. This mission was very significant because it was the one that changed Krikalev's life forever. On May 18, 1991, Krikalev reached the Baikonur Cosmodrome, ready to launch into space. The Baikonur Cosmodrome represents another significant achievement for the Soviets. This was the world's first spaceport to launch a rocket into space. Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite, was launched from here in 1957. The rocket that flew the first man who ever ventured into space, Judy Garhan, was also launched here. Baikonur Cosmodrome is the largest operational space launch facility in Russia to date. It equally serves as the chief base of operations for Russian space exploration missions. The port is located in Kazakhstan and has always been the ideal launch site for all manned space vessels. For his second mission, Sergei Krikalev went with a Ukrainian commander named Anatoly Artsabowski and Helen Sherman, the first British astronaut. It is important to note here that these two astronauts were not really well experienced or even knowledgeable about the Russian space station. And so much of the success of this mission rested on the shoulders of Sergei Krikalev. The mission had barely started when Krikalev's skills were put to the test. Just two days after departure, the team approached MIR. But there was a problem. The targeting or docking systems had failed. You see, the MIR station was equipped with a system that enabled two spacecraft to attach to each other and stay in orbit. MIR was maintained at a constant orbit of about 296 to 421 kilometers altitude. It traveled at 27,700 kilometers per hour, thereby completing around 15 orbits per day. The MIR docking module was a key player in its use, as it could also be used for mounting external experiments. However, since the docking module had failed, Krikalev had to find a way to dock manually. Thanks to his expert training and ingenuity, he was able to dock the crew safely. Then, the real work began. Working at the space station was no small feat. You see, although the Myars was large, the workspaces themselves were quite small. This is why only three cosmonauts could be sent to work there at a time. Even for three people, the place was still very cramped. But there were some upsides to working here, though. For instance, you get to enjoy the thrill of researching while floating around and also see 16 sunrises and sunsets. But again, having that many sunrises and sunsets can mess up your sleep patterns. This is why Krikalev and his colleagues had to block off sunlight from the space vessel whenever it was time for sleep. Another problem with Krikalev's space voyage was the need for workouts. Astronauts who spend considerable time in space have to work out in order to avoid losing muscle mass. There's a lot of mystery surrounding this phenomenon, but it's called atrophy. The absence of gravity and some other factors make astronauts lose muscle mass a lot faster than usual, sometimes up to 20% in a couple of days. The only way to minimize the process is by doing exercise. But it isn't easy. Just imagine trying to run on a treadmill while floating around inside a cabin. It's extremely difficult. Krikalev's mission was supposed to last a few months. But by the time he arrived at Mears the second time, the spacecraft had developed a lot of electrical faults. This was not only frustrating, but also very risky. Astronauts rely heavily on space vessels for breathing and survival. 
and so a little mishap could prove to be very consequential. Luckily, Krikalev was a mechanic, so he could attend to most of the issues. However, it wasn't easy. At a point, the vessel's temperature and humidity were messed up, making the vessel a breeding ground for microorganisms. On May 26, 1991, Sherman headed back to Earth, leaving Krikalev and Artsabowski to maintain the space station. Krikalev and Artsabowski conducted spacewalks around the space station, during which they carried out some necessary external repairs and upgrades. During one such routine upgrade, Artsabowski suffered an unfortunate incident. His space jumpsuit had run out of water, and so his helmet visor became foggy, making him unable to see. Krikalev had to guide him back to safety in the Mars, but the cosmonauts didn't only do routine maintenance tasks. They also went sightseeing with the space vessel. Krikalev encircled the Earth with the mirrors several times, catching breathtaking views of monumental places like the Pyramids of Giza and the Grand Canyon. By October 1991, Krikalev had spent five months on the space station. This was supposed to be when Krikalevi would return to Earth. However, a lot was happening back home on Earth that Krikalev didn't know about. The events that unfolded were so dire that the poor astronaut was almost forgotten. First, it was the launching of the Perestroika reform program by the Soviet's president, Mikhail Gorbachev. The people didn't accept the program, and in fact, it provoked communists. Tensions began to rise in the USSR as most of the president's policies were quite upsetting, and many were simply not implemented properly. Economic and political problems began to surface all over the country, leading to serious chaos. In 1991, a coup was carried out to remove President Gorbachev. This was the first major event that indicated the end of the Soviet Union. Gradually, Soviet states began to break away. By December 1991, nearly all the states that once formed the USSR had become independent. Kazakhstan was the last to break out. All this was why Krikalev remained in space, according to his wife. He also had other sources for exclusive news, one of whom was a reporter named Margaret Le Quinto. Krikalev knew all of these things happening in the USSR would greatly affect his mission. It really did. You see, the independence of Kazakhstan was a major blow to the Soviet space program, especially because the Baikonur Cosmodrome was located in Kazakhstan. Without this launch station, the Soviet space program would be handicapped to carry out any space exploration mission. Russia was short on cash, so building another space launch station was basically impossible. The only way out was for the two nations to come to a mutually beneficial agreement. And so, the Russian government decided to give Kazakhstan a slot in the next space adventure. This meant that Kazakhstan would be allowed to send an astronaut of their own when next the Russian space agency sends cosmonauts into space. Kazakhstan accepted the offer, and their choice of astronaut was a man named Tokhtar Aubakirov. Although this arrangement may have favored both parties, it didn't favor one person. Krikalev As we mentioned earlier, the space station could only hold three men at a go. As a result of this new swapping, a cosmonaut who would have helped Krikalev was dropped from the next mission. So Krikalev had to stay and fill in the gap since he was the most experienced to take care of business at Myers. The Russian space agency never told him how long he would have to stay. For him, it was going to be an indefinite stay. Now this may seem exciting to anyone who's obsessed with visiting space, but in the real sense, it's quite horrific. Imagine being stuck in a small cabin in a dying spaceship that can fail or break down at any moment. To top it off, you're struggling to exercise every day so as to stay healthy because your muscles are constantly being drained. Krikalev was homesick and working as an engineer on Mirs was no easy one. But it gets even harder when you have to work while floating in the air with limited food and oxygen. However, he had to stay put. On October 4, 1991, the new team arrived, led by Commander Alexander Volkov. Six days later, two cosmonauts, along with Krikalev's former teammate Art Zabowski, returned to Earth. You can only imagine how sad Krikalev must have felt at that moment. That would have been his chance to go home, but again, it was delayed. To make matters worse, in the next couple of months, the once great Soviet Union had been completely replaced by 15 independent republics. Krikalev was now an outcast. The country that had sent him into space no longer existed, meaning his passport and everything else pertaining to his nationality had become invalid. The poor cosmonaut had to spend both Christmas and New Year in outer space, wondering if he'd ever be able to return home. Krikalev had spent eight months in space. 
Spending a long time in space can be very risky for the human body. Our bodies weren't designed to float around in the cosmic wild. And so astronauts and cosmonauts usually develop health issues when they stay too long in space. From radiation to constant muscle fatigue and space microbes, Krikalev suffered it all. And to worsen it all, during this time, the Russian economy had dwindled so much. It was so bad that the Russian space agency could hardly afford to send Krikalev the food and supplies he needed for his stay. Krikalev had to improvise with the little stuff he had left. Now you may be wondering why Krikalev didn't abandon the mission when all the odds were against him. Well, it turns out that the cosmonaut was loyal and dedicated to his mission. In fact, he had a means of returning to Earth at any time if he wanted to. There was a Soyuz emergency capsule that could safely get him back to Earth. However, the problem was that there was only one on board. Also, Krikalev was the only cosmonaut with the technical know-how to keep things going smoothly on mirrors. The cosmonaut admitted that he was constantly faced with a dilemma of whether to abandon his mission or wait until he was officially called to return home. However, amidst all the hardship and uncertainty, Krikalev continued to perform his duties. Under his watch, Emyar remained in good working condition. His time to return home finally came in March 1992, when Germany paid a million dollars to the Russian space agency to allow their own astronaut travel to MIR on the next mission. This was a win for Germany because it would allow the astronaut Klaus Dietrich Vlada to become the first German astronaut in space. It was also a win for the Russians because they really needed the cash. With this move, Russia could finally afford to replace Krikalev. This news came as a great relief to Krikalev, who had spent over 10 months in space, during which he circled the planet 5,000 times. The cosmonaut couldn't wait to be reunited with his wife and daughter. Krikalev's replacement was a cosmonaut named Alexander Koller, who took his place on March 17, 1942. However, it was one week after the replacement crew arrived that Krikalev was finally free to return to Earth. Krikalev was accompanied by Klaus and Commander Volkov. When their Soyuz landed at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on March 25, 1992, it was like a dream come true for Krikalev. As the door opened, he was so weak that a team had to come pull him out. Due to several months of muscle atrophy, Krikalev couldn't even stand against Earth's gravity. Several men had to carry him out, and he was greeted by a great crowd of people who had come to see this wonder cosmonaut who risked 10 months of his life to serve his country. In all, it was a relief for Krikalev, who was finally able to breathe a fresh atmosphere for the first time in 311 days. Later, when he could walk, he was sent on a plane to reunite with his family. A lot had changed when Krikalev got back to Russia. For instance, the name of his hometown had changed from Leningrad to St. Petersburg. Krikalev himself had changed a lot too. You see, astronauts undergo several changes when they return from space missions. Things like cardiovascular system function, eyesight, and immune system are all altered. Plus, there's always an extreme loss of body mass. Krikalev wasn't reported to have any serious health issues, but he had severely lost weight and grown a little bit taller. His case was quite mild compared to some astronauts who lose focus and have body or brain problems when they return to Earth. Krikalev was quite the lucky astronaut. Not only did he break the record for the longest staying astronaut in space, but he also managed to return unscathed, living a healthy life despite all he went through. Although we may not fully know what horrors Krikalev saw or experienced while in space, it's quite obvious that he's happy now, enjoying life with his family. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.